Oh, hello there. You may be wondering what I'm making. Well, I'm going to tell you. It's part of a Vivaldi board, and we're going to go over how to make this today and why I'm only making this piece of the Vivaldi board versus the whole entire thing. Now, real quick, a Vivaldi board, what it is, is you set, normally there's a piece right here as well that a hole cut out like your inner cover. But the way I'm making it, I'm making just a big shim, I'm drilling my holes, and then adding in screen to keep things from flying in there. This will be my Vivaldi board. Now what's going to happen is it's going to sit right on top of that inner cover. So then you're basically completing your Vivaldi board there. And then where the hole is in the center, you're going to use this same type of screen to cover that. And then that will keep bees from coming up in here. What you do next is you're going to put burlap, just pile it in here. Now the purpose of a Vivaldi board is to help get the moisture out of the hive during the winter time. Because as us northerners know, bees and moisture in winter do not mix. So that is the whole purpose of these. And I got this idea from Vino Farm on YouTube. Really nice guy. If you ask him questions, he'll help you out there. And he's also on Instagram, just like we are in GD Honey Acres. We're on Instagram. All right, for starters, I went to the hardware store yesterday, aka Menards, and I decided to go with 1x12s. Reason being, I could actually get three cuts, like uh, three of my side pieces on one cross cut. So I get three rips on one cross cut, and then I should have enough there to make my spacer board underneath for when, if, when and if I need to use uh, granulated sugar to help the bees through the winter. We're gonna make two cross cuts and that's enough to make, what, three long sides and three end pieces for the Vivaldi board. We're gonna go ahead and our first cut is going to be at 19 and 15 sixteenths. Which if you're wondering what 19 and 15 sixteenths is, that's this last little line before 20. So we're going to make our first cut right there. I'm going to get my little square here. Make my line. Bring it on over. Remember guys, always wear eye protection. Be aware of your hands and all that such. Now I'm going to be cutting on this side of the line so that I know this side will be exactly how I want it. And I should make the line disappear as we go. And this will equal three of my long sides. I'm only going to be cutting out two out of this and I'll probably figure something out to do with the rest of that board later. Because I'll need to make one more Vivaldi board for this year. Now, our next cut is going to be 14 and 3 quarters. Now these 1x12s, I went 10 footers and I found out last night you could easily make almost 5 complete Vivaldi boards from one 1x12x10. One by by Let's get this cut up. And I'm, I just used a standard pine. I don't need to go real fancy and buy the high quality stuff. It's going to last, especially since I'm going to be using an exterior latex paint on these. And just like before, I cut on the outside of the line, but close enough it just took that edge of the line off. Let's get over to the table saw now. Okay, so here on the table saw, I have the height of the blade just above where the lumber is. Let me bring the piece over. So it's just above. That's how that's set. And I got the distance here marked at three inches and a quarter. All right, let's get cutting. Always try to use your push sticks for safety reasons. Wear your safety glasses. Now 
Now let's say you need that last cut. Well, how are you going to set this up? Because if you got it right here, your fingers are pretty darn close to that blade. So what I've been doing, I've been using this block here. You push it right there, take your push stick or whatnot, and come in here and just run it all the way through. That'll keep your fingers safe. Safety is important, guys. Always be safe with what you do. All right, so now that we've got those four pieces cut, we're going to go ahead and put them together. Now, like before in my other videos, videos where I showed you guys what, how I'm building things, I'm using Type Bond 3. It's waterproof, it's a good outdoor wood glue. All I'm doing, just get a little bit on here, smear it around. Just got it like that. Now, I went ahead and got my small drill set up so I can just go ahead and drill some holes here. Some That way you don't crack the wood when you go run your screws in. I'm using triple coated decking screws to hold these together with the Type Bond 3. And that's very important because you don't want them rusting out. And since we already drilled our pre-drilled our holes, we shouldn't break our wood. And I always countersink them a little bit. Now that's basically the whole process I'm going to be doing on assembling this whole deal. The small piece is on the inside, long piece on the outside. I personally like to assemble the next side piece. Now one thing to think about, I learned if you have like a knot, say so runner right here, don't run your screw into that. That knot's harder and it'll crack and it'll break and split apart. So run it below or above wherever your knot is. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this the rest of the way together and I'll tell you what we're gonna do on the next step of making your, I guess, Vivaldi shim since it's not the entire thing. And also, it's important, guys, to make sure that you got a flat surface. And there we go. We are assembled. All right, now how I am getting all my holes even, I'm using this tool here, and I made a mark at an inch and three quarters. And all I'm doing is set it on here like that. Just run it on down. It should be basically the same all the way across. If you want to, go ahead and run it back that way. There you go. Now, to mark where I'm going to put my holes, for me, what seemed to work out is a mark at four and an eighth, eight and an eighth, and 12 and an eighth. And that's where I'll drill my holes. Once again, I'm using this tool to get my center line. Just coming straight down like that and following it along. That'll keep it nice and even. Then come in with your tape measure or square ruler, whatever you want to use. You know, your wood, the old school fold out wood ruler. Go ahead and make your marks where you're going to drill your holes. That simple. Next, you got your hole saw bit here. This is an inch and a quarter. You can go inch and a half, whatever. That's fine. But I like making my starting divots, I guess. Kind of like if you're using a center punch into steel to mark in your holes for where you're going to drill. I like doing that. So that way I could just rock it out. All right, we got our holes made. Let's go ahead and start drilling. Now when you're drilling, you kind of do a little bit of a rocking motion a little bit, and that'll help it out. And then I never drill all the way through on one side. show you why. You can come in from this side and 
then pull that right off. Good to go. Just like that, three holes are made. All right, now we are not quite done yet. Now y'all might be thinking, Jake, you drilled holes in this, how's that gonna keep bees from coming in and out? Well, if you remember at the beginning of the video, I was stapling something. So, what I did, I've got this, what it's like, I think an eighth inch. Let's do a measure real quick. How big are these squares? Yeah, they're eighth inch squares. That, that's perfect. Eighth inch is all you need for this because that'll keep the bees out and any other bugs out at the same time. Now what I, this stuff is thin enough and easy enough to cut. You can use a nice sharp utility knife. What I did is I just mark, kind of figured out, you know, you can get your hole size right. So I got my hole right here. Well, you want enough space on either side of that that you can staple securely enough. So I'll go like four or five squares up and then I'll just cut there and go all the way down. Now this will be the same type of hardware cloth that I use to block the holes on top of the inner covers to keep the bees from coming up to the uh, Vivaldi board. So next what I'll do is I'll kind of line it up like that. Take your utility knife, make sure it's a good blade, just come on straight down with it. There you go. And we're just gonna staple it right there. I like this style of stapler, it works for me. Like that, now you got this secured here. No bugs or anything are gonna be coming through that. All right, so here we go. We made our Vivaldi shim, I guess you could say. It's not a full Vivaldi board, because a Vivaldi board, well, like I said earlier, will be like a, have an inner cover portion right here, and then you would remove your inner cover from the hive and set this right on top. All right, guys, hopefully this helped you out. Oh, by the way, talk about kind of how it works so that burlap in there and that inner cover kind of covered with this it'll still allow moisture to be carried with that hot air from the hive well, the hot air will be kind of trapped in here but the moisture will go through the burlap hit your uh, telescopic cover come back down but it'll only land on the burlap it won't go back in the hives then these holes will allow ventilation to allow that water and moisture to evaporate therefore you don't have to worry about it going back into the colonies and hurting our precious bees. We're, as beekeepers, we're trying to do everything we can all the time to make sure our bees are safe and they're gonna make it through winter. More than likely, I'm gonna go ahead and paint these all black, which will help with maintaining the temperature up in here and help that burlap to evaporate the moisture off of it. All right, guys, hopefully, you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, go ahead and put them down in there. I want to see them. I'd love to hear anybody else's advice or their thoughts on these. But I'm going to try them on all seven of my colonies this year, and we're going to see how they do. Hopefully they do really well, and we'll have a great percentage of colonies surviving the winter. I know it's not going to be 100%, but I'm hoping for at least, I don't know, 50 or 60% survival rate this year. All right, guys. Give me a like and a thumbs up. Please like and subscribe. Like I said earlier, I'd love to hear your comments, your thoughts. Um, I'll pray for your family. You pray for mine. I hope you're doing well whenever you are, wherever you are. Stay healthy. Be kind to others. Help each other out. I'll catch you all later. Bye.